For plants to operate efficiently, the proper flow of fluids is essential. To keep liquids flowing through plant piping systems, pumps are used. All pumps have the same basic function, to move liquids through piping systems to where they're needed in the plant. However, different types of pumps are used in plants, and they're identified in different ways. One way that a pump can be identified is by the liquid that it pumps. For example, this pump supplies feed water to a boiler, so it can be called a feed water pump or a boiler feed pump. A pump can also be identified by its specific function in a process. For example, this pump creates a vacuum in a process, so it can be called a vacuum pump. Another way that a pump can be identified is by its physical location. For example, these pumps are located at the point where liquid enters a process, so they can be called inlet pumps. Now, there are also other methods that can be used to identify pumps. For instance, some companies identify pumps using letter and number combinations on process flow charts. It's also possible to use more than one name for the same pump. For instance, a feed pump that's located on the north side of a plant may be called a north feed pump. That name is actually based on two methods of identification, function and physical location. The thing to remember is to make sure that you're familiar with the methods your company uses to identify the pumps under your control. Pumps can vary greatly in several ways, but certain components are common to all pumps. For example, all pumps have an inlet, a casing, and an outlet. During operation, liquid enters the pump through the inlet, located here. This side of the pump is also called the suction side. The pressure of the liquid is lowest at this point. The purpose of the pump's casing is to contain the liquid inside the pump during operation. The casing houses all of the pump's internal parts. The liquid leaves the pump through the outlet. This side of the pump is also called the discharge side. The pressure of the liquid is highest at this point. Inside the pump, there's a component that physically moves the liquid through the pump. The type of component that's used determines the type of pump. Basically, pumps can be grouped into two general categories, positive displacement pumps and centrifugal pumps. A positive displacement pump uses a piston or some other device to push or positively displace controlled amounts of liquid through the pump. A centrifugal pump, on the other hand, uses an impeller, which creates a centrifugal force to move the liquid. Centrifugal force is the force that develops when something moves or spins in a circular motion. In a centrifugal pump, this force pushes the liquid away from the center of rotation and out of the pump. 